Hi, my name is Deljit Singh. Some people know me as Del. And I'm standing here on Cromwell Road today. Now, when you, uh, you ask people about Cromwell Road or Millfield area, they often put the shutters up and uh, they've got particular views on it, which sometimes are fairly disparaging. Uh, however, the area is actually steeped in a lot of history. Um, a lot of it's personal to me because I was actually born here, lived here for a number of years. Um, in fact, so I want to take you on a bit of a, a magical history tour around this area. Some people will actually understand it or resonate with them. Others will kind of think, oh, wow, I didn't know this. So, listen, a lot of it's my personal journey, but there'll be other anecdotes in there as well. And I guess my journey starts here, 101 Cromwell Road, Peterborough. And on a Sunday, the 29th of July, 1962, this is where I actually enter the world. So, in the back there, home delivery, obviously. So... Being born here in Cromwell Road back in the 1960s, I've kind of got a good measure of what this place looked like back then and then for the remaining sort of 32 years before I moved away from the area. So let me tell you a little bit about what Cromwell Road was like. Well, first things first, you certainly didn't have all of this double parking cars. In fact, back then, you were lucky if you had about three or four cars parked along the other side of the road. But now, as you can see, it's really busy. There's a lot of change here. In 1964, my parents actually bought this shop, which became Rathor Continental Store, or Mr. Singh's Sweet Shop, as a lot of people got to know it during the 1970s. It was pretty much the first ethnically owned shop in Peterborough. And we pretty much sold everything, really everything you can think of. In fact, we had sort of uh, clothing in there, we had sort of uh, food. But the interesting aside was that uh, some of the other shops in the area weren't that keen on sort of newcomers in here. So there were a lot of rumours spread about how unhygienic the Asians were or you know the colour would come off our hands onto the fresh food because well, back then it wasn't pre-packaged so my mum actually got an English lady to help her in the shop just to get the locals to kind of realise that you know we weren't hostile and we weren't unhygienic which really worked and I remember as being a kid because I was probably about sort of three four years old when we moved here you know rushing to open the shop door for customers and they were like oh how polite your kids are how lovely they are and so on so we kind of won over the locals with that and the shop stayed open as a kind of grocery shop until the kind of uh, late 80s so probably about 24 25 years worth one of the biggest differences between Cromwell Road and in fact Peterborough now and back in the 1960s is the view down here because Looking right down the end now, you can see sort of car park construction. That's pretty much Queensgate. Obviously, that never existed back then. In fact, Bright Street that runs across there was only actually halfway through. It stopped because there were houses all the way along. But now it links all the way through to Borges Boulevard. Again, wasn't there at the time. What was there, however, interestingly enough, right on the other end of there was a lovely old building, a lovely old building occupied by a company called Pelham Parker. And they were actually into bicycles so you could buy your bikes your spares and everything there and they were actually there for hundreds of years strangely enough they're not there anymore and the lovely old building's gone but Pelham Park was still in Peterborough they're actually out at Newborough way but that was quite a kind of historic building quite an iconic building at the end there and there was quite a lot going on down there so again Peterborough has changed some would say you know and right at the end here where you can see the car park and stuff now is actually where Perkins engines used to be so would you believe it centre of town we actually had a massive industrial kind of complex this is where engines were being built it's all changed in the, the late 70s when that was all demolished and Queensgate came to Peterborough. Living on Cromwell Road just around the corner here Beach Avenue is the closest school and this was Springfield Infants back in the 60s when I actually attended here with my, my brothers and in fact you can see the original entrance there, the infant's entrance, obviously a lot's changed now. Strangely enough though, I'd say we were the only non-white children in the school, so and our names of Manjit, Sarjit and Deljit were, were going to be way too hard for the teachers and way too hard for the kids. So we were kind of christened, which sounds bizarre in this day and age, and called Peter, David and Paul. Now, yeah, it's true. My siblings actually held on to those names, they actually still refer them by Peter and David. I actually dropped the Paul, I guess. I wasn't keen on the name. Sorry to all the Pauls out there watching this. Uh, could have been worse. Could have been Ringo, I suppose. But look, I got back to Delgit uh, when I moved schools, and uh, that was it. But it was a different time, a different era. But this was a, a fabulous school. The staff were rather brilliant, I have to say, at Springfield Infants. OK, so up from the beaches, we're here on Craig Street. And this has changed a lot. This is probably the main route through here over to Lincoln Road and then onto the town centre. Many of us would actually venture this way to go to the cinema, etc. And... Just over there, where the big medical centre is now, used to just be a public car park. And so many of us learned to drive there. I know I did. Sunday mornings, Dad would bring us there. And 
you know, there was no danger, because the car park was generally empty on a Sunday, of hitting anyone else. So actually that was the best place to learn to drive on a Sunday. And just behind me over this side, behind the hedge now, is actually what used to be a Pentecostal church here. So it was really busy on a Sunday with the Pentecostal church. So you'd get your driving lesson in early before the worshippers arrived, which is really fun. But the thing I love the most about Craig Street has got to be this thing over here. Okay, so this is still my favourite part of Craig Street. It's actually a cut through. We used to call it the passage back in the day. It takes you from Craig Street to Russell Street. It's a shortcut. It's probably strewn with a lot of litter and stuff now, but back in the day it was really, really clean and nice. And my favourite memory, although at the time it wasn't that favourite, was when my brothers and I would come from the cinema late at night, and this wasn't very well lit. They would generally get to just over there, and then they'd run through it, so leaving me right at the back. And in between the dog barking and them making ghostly woo noises, it used to scare the heck out of me as a kid running through that passage, whatever. In fact, it used to seem a lot longer. It's something like at The Shining, where it never used to end, even though it's quite short. But it's quite fun, but it's lovely to see that still there. Actually, I just wish it just wasn't strewn with litter and garbage and stuff. But we'll have a quick walk down there now. OK, so this is the passage. I haven't been down here for years, so I see, unfortunately, it is now strewn with uh, various detritus, usually alcohol-related, but it is quite narrow. No, you know, it's, it's just... But as a kid, this seemed vast and long and kind of cavernous, but right now it's like really small, but it is fun and just a short way up and you end up in, in, in Russell Street. A bit of an echo and stuff right now as you can hear, that's why those ghostly noises sounded a lot worse than they would do in the daytime. And at night time with no lighting on here, this is an awful place to be trapped in. Okay, here we are at Cromwell Road and Russell Street. The building behind me over my shoulder is now El Hoot's Shisha Bar, but back in the 1800s it was actually a pub, the Steam Engine Inn. And in fact, during the 60s, my late father and my uncles would come in there. During the 70s, it developed a bit of an unsavory reputation, which is why he stopped coming. And then in the 80s, it was taken over by an Indian family and renamed the Basant Public House. But then this whole area has changed. I mean, across the road is now, uh, was a mosque. In fact, that was established back in the 1970s. And if one goes further along there, there's a, a building. It's got Sahara outside it, but it's actually on the corner of Bright Street. It was then called Neighbourhood House, and it was probably the first community group and the first play area that was set aside for kids and community. It was a very distinct green building, uh, lovely green building, uh, some really helpful people there. But again, it was just a sign of the times. Everything has changed in this part of Cromwell Road. So this is Russell Street, Gladstone Street, and again, highly residential. A lot of interesting places around here, and certainly some iconic places from the sort of 60s and 70s. Behind me, it's now called New Ros, and it's a grocery store. Back then, it used to be a laundrette originally, so before people had washing machines at home, they'd always bring their washing down here. And then, in the 80s, it became Videomatic. It was actually the first video hire shop for the Asian community specifically. You could actually go and hire your Bollywood movies from there. I remember coming around the corner from Cromwell Road, hiring a Bollywood film or two for my mum or my um, sisters so they could watch them at home. So that was throughout the kind of like late 70s, early 80s, that became the go-to place to get your videos. Um, sadly, with the demise of video and stuff, that sort of thing all went bye-byes and more and more people decided to sort of watch this stuff either at a cinema or somewhere else. But again, it was quite an iconic building at its time, Videomatic. On this side, we've actually got a new Ros Bakery. This used to be Craig's, and that was probably one of the first off-licenses because back in the day, you couldn't actually buy alcohol in the same shop. So this was probably one of the first few off-licenses in this whole area where you could actually buy a, a bottle. So I do remember on the odd occasion walking in the very narrow shop, actually buying a bottle of then Bacardi, I think was my dad's tipple. And I actually wasn't 18 either, but Mr. Craig knew me and my family quite well. So we'd sort of slip it in a brown bag under the counter, which is quite nice for him, knowing that I wouldn't drink it. Now, this is the top end of Russell Street and Borges Boulevard over there and obviously this holds some special memories for me personally because around 1974, the summer of, this was just waste ground. Borges Boulevard wasn't even built, there was just basically a run through from Russell Street straight onto Mayor's Walk Bridge and myself, my brothers and some of our friends were approached by the late Reverend Richard Payton, probably one of the, the finest examples of a, a, you know, somebody that loved Peterborough dearly and what Richard did was ask us to help convert what was waste ground into a children's play area. And so we spent most of that summer um, actually picking up stones, rocks, clearing stuff away. They got some big old pipes there, which we put underneath there. And it became Kamba Ya Watoto, which is what he called it. It was Swahili for chain of children. And it became the first children's playground in this area. 
And over the years and the decades, it's actually gone through lots and lots of iterations and changes. It now is lovely grass and so on. Back then it was actually just pretty rough and rugged, but it was just an area to get us off the roads where we, people, kids could play. But it is quite a fabulous uh, undertaking that was undertaken by Richard Payton back in the 1970s. OK, so just a bit further up from Russell Street, along Gladstone Street, you had the Gladstone Arms, a pub. Sadly, it's gone now, but it was quite iconic in its day. A lot of live music, which some of the residents didn't appreciate, but um, I think the local music lovers did. There was also the Flakes owned uh, a little shop along here. I think it's now possibly a cafe, but it was an off-licence. I always remember that because there used to be, before they took it on, I think there was uh, the people that owned it used to actually have a little sherry barrel around the back then. You could actually, I was fascinated the fact that people used to bring their own empty bottles in and fill them with sherry or get them filled. And that's the way life worked. I, you know, this is before pre-packaging came on. It's amazing how we're coming full circle where people have been encouraged to take their own containers into shops again rather than actually buy bottled and canned goods. So just around the corner from St Mark's School was actually the church, St Barnabas Church. And next door to St Barnabas Church was St Barnabas Hall. Sadly, St Barnabas Hall is now no longer there. But it was a lovely little community hall. Um, and whilst I didn't live here, the hall was available to hire. And back in the uh, 70s and certainly in the 80s, uh, I and my brothers actually used to use that hall for discos, rock discos, heavy rock discos. Yeah, I know you're thinking, hang on a second, guys with turbans running a heavy rock disco. We did, we did, only in Peterborough. You see, Peterborough has some uniques about it. So we ran a uh, heavy rock disco, the Spectra Sound System, and we did it at quite a few community halls. So St Barnabas is one. Uh, up on um, Northfields, there's the Unity Hall. We did it there. St John's Hall on Mayor's Walk as well. So we used to do these. We set our disco up there and get bikers used to come up and play on the door. And it was quite, because we were Sikhs, Indians, running this thing. We often get into papers about this. And on one occasion, more than one occasion, we were actually threatened by the National Front. So the National Front uh, would actually send us um, hate mail, um, which made a change from having sort of dog feces put through your door letterbox. Um, and they would generally be along the lines of, you know, when you do your next disco, using the P word frequently, we're going to break it up. And they, we were told at St Barnabas this one night there, we're going to turn up en masse. And got to love the biking community, got to love bikers, they were all with us. I mean, these are all white guys with long hair, motorcycles, but they didn't, there was no racism there. They actually just loved us for what we were. I remember when the National Front wanted to turn up. Um, unfortunately, I was the one that was uh, picked to be the guy stand at the front there to sort of a little bit like a sort of sacrificial lamb. You stand at the front, when they see you, they're, gonna, they're bound to want to come and sort you out and whatever and give you a good kick in. Uh, who wouldn't? And so I remember standing out there kind of sheepishly waiting as these two or three cars drove by a couple of times full of skinheads. And then when they turned up, um, and a couple of them tried to get out of the car, you know, a whole load of bikers emerged from the hall to take them on um, and ran after their car and ended up sort of, they, they, they drove away at speed whilst these bikers, you know, attacked their car and stuff. I mean, it was scary for me, but it was quite gratifying that we had so much support and love against what were basically some really horrible, horrible people. It was quite something back in the 1960s to arrive in a community that was basically alien to one and just assimilating ourselves into it. And they made us so welcome. And again, it's been one of the strengths of Peterborough. They've become very diverse very quickly.